Hi, this is Eliza. Welcome back to Eliza's Bookshelf. Today, I want to go over my April book haul. So for the month of April, I actually bought more books than I thought I would. Nowadays, I generally try not to buy any books because I have a lot of books at home that I need to read. And so if I can get away with buying no books or maybe just one book, then I'm happy. Book of the month and what's it called? The bookish book box does not count because they're my reoccurring subscriptions. So outside of that, I try to keep it to a minimum. But this past month, since I joined BookTube, I, you know, I'm just exposed to so many people talking about what books they love. I ended up buying more books. I bought five books and for some people that may be a little, but it's a lot for me. <laughs> now that I'm trying to chip out my TBR back there. But anyways, so number one is The No Show. I already talked about, you know, picking this up at the bookstore, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but this is one of the books that I bought last month and, and that I have already read, so that is great. The other book that I bought in April is For the Wolf. I saw a lot of people talking about pre-ordering the second book in the series and that's why I wanted to pick this up and see if I liked it. For the Wolf is marketed as an adult fantasy book, I believe, but people have been saying that it reads more YA. It is a Little Red Riding Hood retelling. So the main character is a second daughter and apparently second daughter, they're supposed to be, you know, sacrificed to this big bad wolf in order to keep their family safe or their tribe. I don't know. I don't know too much about it, but she's supposed to be sacrificed to this big bad wolf. Turns out the big bad wolf is actually not that bad at all. So I'm excited to see what actually happens in there. And I think there's a lot of magic. She has magic, I think. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to read this one and see if I like it enough to move on to the second one that's coming out later this, later this year. The other book I bought is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. So I've never heard anything about this, but when I read the back, I was like, oh, it sounds pretty spooky. It was on the fantasy table, but it sounds a little bit more like horror to me. And when I researched more about it, it's what they call fantastical horror. I heard a lot of people say it reminds them of Stephen King's writing, so I'm super excited about that. Basically, it's about this family who inherits this house from the grandfather who was super abusive, but in order to inherit, it, they have to go back and I don't know what happens. Don't listen to me. Something about dark magic and things that happened back then is going to happen right now and similarities to Stephen King, super scary, um, super magical. So I'm excited to read this one. I'm really bad at about explaining books if you haven't noticed but okay so the next two books that I want to read is actually influenced by Pauline from Books I've Loved on Instagram. She's on YouTube too. But these two books I bought because she raved about it on and on. The first book is Things We Never Got Over. And I hear about it and have been seeing it in more than Pauline's channel. I've been seeing it all over Bookstagram. Things We Never Got Over is basically the grumpy sunshine trope with um, small town setting. And basically this woman runs away from her fiance on the wedding day, I think in order to, well, one, run away from that relationship and two, to help out with her twin sister who's basically kind of all over the place and lost and needs a lot of help. But with her twin sister, the twin sister actually does something. I think she leaves and leaves her with her niece. So the main character has to take care of her niece and in this small town, she has no one. She doesn't have a place to stay there. So I believe the grumpy sunshine is going to help her out. I love books with grumpy sunshine trope because there's something so sweet about this grumpy guy who's mean to everyone, but they're super sweet to you. Has that nice side to them. Anyways, I'm excited to read this one and I think a lot of people have been saying good things. So yeah, trying to keep my, my expectations low though. And the last book that I bought is also influenced by Pauline. She like cried her eyes out and sometimes you just need to have that nice good cry. Sometimes you want to be very sad and depressed and you want your heart to be ripped in smithereens. So if you want that, if that sounds like a good time to you, then pick this one up. I haven't read it yet, but based on all of Pauline's tears, I think this is a, good, a nice sad romance story. Pack Up the Moon, it kind of reminds me of that movie called P.S. I Love You with Hilary Swank and Gerard Butler. So this, this guy uh, finds out that his wife is going to pass away from a terminal illness 
and his wife to help him on that first year after she passes away writes him a letter for each month um yeah that sounds exactly like p.s i love you but i'm excited to read it in book form i think p.s i love you was a book too i don't know but yeah so that's the last book that i bought in april i didn't get any book of the month books i skipped that month and i think the bookish box is behind on their books so i'll get i'll get march and april this month i believe i hope but yeah that's my book haul i hope you enjoy i'll see you next time bye